For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watched their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief, treating their child with cannabis. These are their stories. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Hello, hello, hello. Oh man, hope everyone's doing well and getting ready for the holidays. Um, but as you guys know, as we've been talking about for the even since the beginning of the month is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Yes, and, yes, yes. And we're still pushing forward. We're still advocating for those uh, who are going through it, just like our son, and even uh, friends, family members that are going through it, um, especially the little ones. You know, we keep them in our prayers, and uh, we're just pushing the message and get everyone. Uh, to really support and advocate like we are, like for any other child, you know. So tonight, tonight, we have a great guest. His name is Dario Herrera, and he has over 25 years of nonprofit speaking, branding, and marketing, as well as leadership experience. Um, his background comes from working with uh, A-list celebrities and arranging from Doherty to Pitbull to Lil Wayne's, and now he's more or less on the side of a non-for-profit organization called Mickey's Miracle. He's the executive director, and he's also the founder of Legend Studio and Digital. So he's bringing all those talents to get the message out and the awareness about epilepsy because of Mickey. So welcome, welcome, to Ariel. Thank you, Osiris, and thank you, Nina. I appreciate uh, the work you guys are doing. I appreciate you know your story and your journey with Aiden and how you guys are paying it forward to really educate folks who may not be aware about the dangers of pediatric epilepsy and the urgency in which we have to react mm -hmm. to a epilepsy diagnosis in a young child because we have learned through experience and through our advocacy that every day counts. Yes. So we certainly appreciate the work you're doing and uh, certainly are honored by the invitation to be on your show. Yes, thank you for what you guys are doing as well. Uh, please, if you can share with the audience about Mickey's um, Miracle, how did that come about? Who's Mickey? Uh, just in case for our audience who are not aware. And also, how did you come on board um, to join them and helping to spread the message? Yeah, thank you for the question. So Mickey is Michaela Grease, and she was born on October 26th of 2011. Uh, she's now nine. Uh, she had her first seizure when she was three. And by the time she was nine months old, she had failed over eight anti-seizure medications and protocols and was diagnosed with intractable epilepsy and infantile spasms. Mm. Uh, as each month passed, Christy, uh, who's her mom and also the CEO and visionary founder of Mickey's Miracles, realized that something was gravely wrong. And uh, she felt like she was waging a war and could not get answers, like she was fighting a ghost because uh, everywhere she went, uh, she was getting met with either resistance or non-answers or things that just didn't match what her soul was telling her about her child. And then through a mutual friend, she got referred to Chalk, uh, which is you know Children's Hospital of Orange County, and a specific pediatric epileptologist there. Dr. We, we commonly refer to her as Dr. Z, direct, uh, Dr. Mary Zupont. And, and Dr. Z really gave Christy, for the first time, the answers um, that they were looking for, even answers that they didn't want to hear. Uh, and the day before Mickey's first birthday, uh, she had brain surgery to remove the parietal, the occipital, and temporal lobes of the left hemisphere of her brain in order to combat the seizures. Wow. And the goal was to preserve, to preserve her quality of life. Uh, and, and Christy and, and even the doctors, you know, never thought that, that Mickey could be quote unquote normal. And today she's you know, a nine-year-old fashionista. She's sassy. She's funny. She's uh, got an incredible sense and passion for life. She's incredibly unique. Uh, she plays soccer. She swims. She sings. Uh, she's learning to play instruments and uh, really is a miracle. And wow. um, as Christy shared her story and as other folks became aware of the story, they started coming to Christy uh, to understand her journey and what uh, Christy was able to do to advocate on behalf of Mickey. And, uh, and that's how it was born. That's how Mickey's Miracles was born. It was born very organically. Uh, Christy never set out to, to create a nonprofit. 
but she saw an opportunity as she prayed and, and realized that, that God was giving her a calling. Uh, and that calling was uh, to help families uh, with children suffering from pediatric epilepsy get the support they need, uh, get access to the highest quality of care, the highest possible urgent diagnosis, and to uh, really support them every step of the way from advocacy to financial support to even emotional support. Uh, and that's how Mickey's Miracles was born. Uh, I was introduced to Mickey's Miracles two years ago, roughly, uh, by a mutual friend uh, who was a legislator. And uh, they were looking for a marketing company. And I had had uh, a child uh, on the autism spectrum. Uh, I was in denial as a dad when my, his mom first told me that we should get him diagnosed. Uh, so I identified very quickly with the idea of having a quote-unquote special needs child. Uh, with a neurological uh, disease, and uh, Christy and I, you know, hit it off well. We understood the messaging very well. They hired me initially to handle the uh, marketing messaging and social media. And roughly uh, eight to ten months ago, uh, they were looking for an executive director to allow Christy to focus more on the vision of the, uh, of the organization, not so much on the day-to-day execution, although she's very involved, hands-on. Uh, with the families that we uh, bring into Mickey's Miracles and advocate for, uh, you know, she needed some support and uh, they extended me the opportunity to work as executive director uh, with Mickey's Miracles. And I had a background in marketing and messaging. I had a legislative background, both at the local and national, uh, excuse me, at the state level. Uh, and I had also worked with a number of health care organizations uh, at the local level um, at the, in Clark County, which is Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, which uh, gave me a unique insight into the three pillars that Mickey's Miracles works on. The first one is, you know, helping families gain access to care and diagnosis urgently. The second is increasing awareness about the dangers of epilepsy and the need for funding. And uh, the third is, you know, helping Mickey's Miracles be, you know, financially independent so you can provide resources for the families uh, as they look to access care and uh, you know, get support as they need uh, to make sure their children are, are cared for because uh, our mission is to make sure that every child uh, gets to be seizure free. And our vision is uh, for a world that every child gets to be a child. Every child gets to not only live, but gets to have their childhood preserved so mm-hmm. that they can dance, so that they can play soccer, so they can swim, yes. so they can play, so they can experience what it's like to be a child and uh, that's not often easy, given the uh, treatment protocols, the freaking visits in and out of the hospital, and of course the emotional issues that uh, are created for families around you know these beautiful children who who have seizing brains and uh, who are at risk, be- a great risk because of it. Wow! Wow, that's, yeah, that's we're amazing. We're getting chills because we know exactly, we know exactly how that. Yeah, goes. we could, we we actually visualize and internalize that process of just dealing with with doctors who just didn't have the answers. It's oh it's usually oh it's genetic. Oh it's environmental. Oh and it's never something concrete you can hold on to. And like you said, you're chasing a ghost. Mm-hmm. You see that you're chasing a ghost from the sense of uh dosaging from the medication or you're chasing a ghost and trying to get the answers and you never come up with answers. You just get up and just like I just gotta do something. I just can't sit here and wait for the answers to come to me. So as a parent I totally understand. Now for you coming on board but not only with your child, but taking on another child, because it's pretty much, you know, once you build up the relationship with the family, you have this connection. And how strong has the bond between you and the family has become now that you are on the inside? I mean, I, I consider Christy and Gabe, who is Mickey's dad, uh, you know, like brothers and sisters to me, honestly. And I consider uh, Mickey part of my family. I haven't spent a lot of time with Mickey personally. Yeah, obviously, you know, we've had uh, COVID issues and, mm-hmm. uh, and and that's important to make sure that, uh, you know, the children and the family are not exposed, uh, especially in this high risk situation. Uh, but the times I spent with her have been just magical, really. We've we've swam together, you know, we've we've eaten meals together, you know, we, we've played together. Uh, she, she refers to me as partner, uh, which mm-hmm. is the sweetest thing on the planet. And uh and there's 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 an unmistakable bond there, and uh, you know I've I've come to know Christy and Gabe uh, really well, and to see their passion for 
Mickey and how they've been able to really fight through the challenges of, you know, everything involved between travel and frequent visits to the hospital and uh, medications and, you know, all the things that are involved with being the parent of, of a high needs child and to see them support one another and to love one another and to, you know, raise a household because they have, you know, three children. Uh, you know, two boys and Mickey, and to see how they do that in a loving environment where it's supportive, uh, open, transparent, loving, kind, forgiving, and uh, and, and just beautiful, really. So I've, I've become quite close uh, to Christy and Gabe. I consider them family, and uh, I love Michaela. I love Mickey. She's, to be around her is to be full of life and to uh, understand that, you know, she doesn't see any limitations on anything she can do. And she has this uh, playful passion for life that uh, that I think a lot of children uh, are missing. Uh, and uh, uh, pediatric epilepsy might have its you know challenges, and obviously create special opportunities uh, for her in terms of treatment and school and access to healthcare and stuff like that. But one thing for sure, nothing's going to hold Nikki back, and that's inspiring to see, and it's really inspiring to be around. Wow, it's an amazing story. Now, let me uh, retract the timeline for the listeners. So she started having seizures at three months or three years old? Three months. No, three months. Three months. Three months. Okay. Wow. Yeah, and it was one day before she turned a year old that she had brain surgery. She was she happened to be a candidate for brain surgery. Not all children are. Yeah, uh, exactly. But she, she happened to be a, uh, a good candidate and... Uh, basically removed uh, the occipital, uh, parietal, and temporal lobes of her left hemisphere of her brain. Uh, that, that was, you know, the area of her brain that doctors uh, found were causing the seizures. And, you know, here she is. She's nine years old, and she's been seizure-free eight years. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. You know, obviously she goes for monitoring, and uh, she's still on anti-seizure medication, and uh, they have their own treatment protocols that uh, they formulated working closely with her doctors, but she's now eight years seizure free. Wow. Yeah, bless her heart. She's, oh man, she's so fortunate. So let me, um, for the listeners, let's um, clarify exactly, and I may pronounce this wrong, but um, what exactly is an epin epintologist, basically epi- the epilepsy doctor that you spoke of? Yeah, uh, epileptologist. <laughs> yes. Uh, are, are doctors that are specialists in epilepsy. Mm-hmm. You know, you have uh, obviously neurologists, uh, you have, you know, epileptologists, and obviously you have primary care physicians mm-hmm. and, you know, pediatricians. And it's our feeling that uh, as families are looking to find, you know, substantive answers that are meaningful and that can put each child on a path for a real diagnosis and real protocols for treatment, uh, it's incumbent upon parents to get in front of a pediatric epileptologist, preferably at a level four epilepsy center. Why? Because they have specialized training. Uh, They know what to look for. They know what to monitor. Uh, They have experience with treatment protocols. Uh, And that's something that uh, neurologists don't always have, uh, certainly primary care physicians or pediatricians uh, don't have that same level of expertise. So part of our mission, uh, in fact, it's the most important part of our mission, is to get families to a level four epilepsy center as urgently as possible for a diagnosis mm. and for the highest level of treatment possible. And it's our vision that every child gets to experience a result like Nikki, wow. right? And, and obviously every protocol for treatment is gonna be different. Uh, you know, some children will be candidates for brain surgery. Others uh, will be treated differently with a combination of uh, holistic medicine, with uh, anti-seizure medication, with diet, with occupational therapy, with speed therapy, and uh, it, what we call a holistic approach mm-hmm. to, uh, to treating pediatric epilepsy. But our vision is that every child gets to experience uh, seizure freedom. And, and we will not rest until every child, uh, not just... In the United States, but in the world, has an opportunity to live a seizure-free life and just be a child. Mm-hmm. That's that's really our vision for the work that we do, and it's why we're driven. It's why Christy works so hard uh, with Mickey's Miracles, and 
and she works hand in hand with families herself. You know, we, we bring in families and if there's a barrier to getting them to level four, you know, our job um, and her passion is to remove whatever those barriers are to make sure families get to a level four epilepsy center as urgently as possible because every moment counts. Every moment can be the difference between uh, a child living a beautiful, you know, quality of life or having permanent brain damage or even worse, you know, God forbid, and, and not making it. So we, you know, we, we do our best to communicate the urgency of a correct diagnosis at the highest level of care possible so that, you know, children can be seizure free. Now, on the legislative side, because you said you had some background on and some experience with that. Have you guys um, w- put together any legislations, any bills um, to help with your cause? Because for us, we had uh, in New York, um, one of the things that we had um, we were wrestling with is getting medicine to our son in school. So and um, we had to create a, a bill to, to address this because. You know, if, if one child, there may be many others who need access to like their cannabis medicine while in school. Now, the other issues that we've seen that, you know, they don't have protocols for children who have um, seizures. And for us, we had to also get a para um, assistant for our son in school who didn't. We had one year the person who didn't have the experience. Now, this year we have somebody who has experience of working with children with epilepsy now, do you see yourselves are looking for legislation around that area for, to help ch- other children who might be in this situation and in the schools? Well, we had some success in the California legislature, and um, Michaela's birthday was uh, basically designated, you know, Pediatric Epilepsy Day in California. Oh, yes, nice. Uh, and that helped us in having conversations with decision makers about the barriers to care, Mm. uh, the lacking in research funding in comparison to other neurological diseases that affect less children and less people generally. Um, And we're now in the process of preparing uh, what we're calling Mickey's Law in Nevada. And part of that is to assess the need for a level four epilepsy center in Nevada because there isn't one. Uh, The nearest one is in Orange County and the next closest one is in Salt Lake City. Uh, and, and those are hikes for families, you know, that are in Nevada. Uh, we're also looking at educating uh, child care providers and even educators on how to spot epilepsy with children <clears throat> and, and looking for opportunities to work with legislative leaders and policymakers to reduce barriers to care, uh, increase transparency in pricing for uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, of course, mm-hmm. and and work, you know, to make sure the level of funding matches the danger that pediatric epilepsy presents to our families and to our children. Uh, we're going to call that Mickey's Law. It's it's going to be an omnibus bill, and our goal is to advance that this next legislative session in Nevada and Carson City. Wow! Congrats. And and we and we and we hope for it to be a national model. Honestly, we. You know, we we are ambitious, and like I said, our vision is that every child in the world gets to be seizure free, and, and that requires a lot of work. And it, it, you know, we if we have to do it state by state, you know, we we have the wherewithal and we have the ability to do it. You know, our our vision is that we pass it in Nevada, and then you know other states kind of wake up, and we bring our efforts to uh, other states and even you know the federal level, because it's that kind of a problem. Uh, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And, and we want people, including, you know, decision makers to understand that, you know, when, when a parent hears a diagnosis of pediatric epilepsy with, uh, infantile spasms or some other form that they understand it's so urgent and so dire that it's almost like they got a a cancer diagnosis. Yeah. You know, there's a certain uh, alarm bell and, sense of urgency and severity that people hear when it's something like cancer, but you know, you don't get the same type of reaction uh, when you hear it's a seizure or it's a pediatric epilepsy or it's infantile spasms. When we know that can be very dangerous and life threatening uh, in almost all circumstances. So, you know, we believe that the work we're going to do in Nevada will set the pace uh, for a national conversation and, and we believe there's going to be an opportunity for federal opportunities there for legislation and potentially even global. So um, that's our vision. I know it's a big vision, uh-huh. but, but we stand by the fact that every child gets to be seizure free 
and we won't rest until that's the case. Awesome. So you were saying, you happen to mention that Okay, in Nevada, you don't have an epilepsy uh, medical center? Level four, right? Level yeah, we don't have a level four, which is the highest uh, oh. designation for a pediatric epilepsy center. Uh, in fact, we don't even have, uh, you know, private practice uh, pediatric epileptologists wow. uh, in Nevada. I think wow. I think in Las Vegas, there might be one or two in private practice. Uh, we don't have a level four. And, and obviously, you know, Nevada you know, deserves to have those kind of resources for their children, you know, wow. and uh, it's something that we're making a priority. You know, we we headquarter in Las Vegas, Nevada, and mm. uh, because of our ability to uh, advocate and to uh, really, you know, champion legislative change and, and, and opportunities uh, for legislation, uh, we really are going to advance Mickey's Law here in Nevada as a first step. Uh, building out what happened in California, uh, pass something of substance, mm -hmm. and hope that creates a national model and a national conversation about what's possible in the terms of of providing resources mm -hmm. and access to care uh, for families who have children suffering from pediatric epilepsy. Wow. So how's the support been, I mean, community-wise? I, I mean, you're bringing all these people together. You would have more than likely see the amount of kids that are basically – in need of what you guys are looking to do and bringing awareness to their, um, I guess somewhat they're suffering as well. Like, how's that been? The numbers have grown. Well, what we've seen is that most people aren't aware of how big of a problem it is and how many children are impacted and how few resources are available, uh, for families to treat their children, uh, with pediatric epilepsy. So we, when we have a conversation and we talk about the numbers, I mean, one in 26 people will experience uh, a seizure or epilepsy in their lifetime. One in 26 That's people. That's a lot. Right? Uh, and I mean, more people will die from epilepsy than from breast cancer on a yearly basis. Yeah. I mean, that, that puts that in serious perspective and we understand uh, obviously, you know, breast cancer is very serious. Uh, and when people hear of breast cancer, you know, they treat it very seriously. Yet, you know, the funding for pediatric epilepsy, which, excuse me, just epilepsy generally, that, which takes more lives than, brain ca than breast cancer does, um, you know, there's less resources, there's less uh, research opportunities, uh, there's less general awareness uh, among the public. So when we uh, have these conversations with folks, they're astounded uh, yeah. by how prevalent it is. Uh, they're astounded by, you know, how little access there is. Like in Nevada, for example, no level four uh, pediatric epilepsy center. And we generally, you know, get a lot of support because it is something that is life threatening. And it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You know, it's, it's if, so it can be for the most part, it can be treated. And, and children can live a quality of life and can have their childhood preserved um, if you act urgently, if you have a treatment protocol that makes sense, uh, you know, for that child or the child is being monitored. And uh, if the parents, you know, listen to their gut mm -hmm. and really champion for their child and, and get them to the highest level of resource as, you know, as quickly as possible, you know, that's, that, that's, that's what we do. That, that's what we help uh, create an awareness and create a conversation and advocate with parents um, to make sure that, you know, the children get urgent diagnosis and the highest possible level of treatment. Wow. It is so funny. It's like, it's one of the oldest neurological diseases it's in the Bible. And yet, you know, people are, we're see people, when you get the diagnosis, it's like you're suffering. You, you're just going, they don't know what to do in the beginning. And it's just sad to me that it being such an old neurological disease that it's still we have to advocate and we still are not getting funded. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's unbelievable. I, I didn't realize, <clears throat> uh, you know, and I was a legislator and I was I served on Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, I served the vice as a vice chair for the University Medical Center here in Clark County. I served as chairman for the uh, community health centers of Southern Nevada. So I had been. Uh, in healthcare uh, at one level or another for quite a long time. And when I first talked to Christy 
uh, and she told me the level of access and and how prevalent and how dangerous uh, pediatric epilepsy was, I was I was in. You know, as, as uh, not only is she an incredible leader, and and you can feel her passion and her love for children, and and how she pours out uh, her energy to advocate for families. You know, um, but but no family should have to experience you know their child uh, suffering from from seizures to the point that uh, they have no quality of life and can suffer you know permanent brain damage or even or even be lost. So. Uh, you know, when I first talked to Christy about it and she told me the prevalence of it and, and you know, what could be done to make sure that children have a quality of life, uh, I was in. And, uh, you know, we've, we've worked together closely now for two years and uh, we've developed a strong relationship and we're growing our mission. In fact, uh, we're in the process of launching the MIND program for kids. Mm-hmm. And MIND is an acronym for Music Inspiring neurological development Mm. research shows that uh, kids who uh, have music therapy and they're at play have more neuroplasticity. Uh, They they are able to develop, you know, faster. They're able to recover more quickly. Uh, And music was a huge part of Mickey's recovery, uh, working with Justin Chadley from uh, In Harmony Music. And uh, that's one of the programs we're launching uh, in 2020 uh, excuse me, 2021, it's basically going to be available for all our uh, Mickey's Warrior families and other uh, organizations that have uh, children with other neurological diseases because oh uh, we know that music and play are a wonderful recipe to go along with the proper treatment protocol in helping these children, you know, their, their young minds and young brains develop uh, and, and recover. So um, that's one of the things that we'll be doing in 2021 and we'll certainly uh, keep you guys you know updated on how that goes oh my god that's so amazing so like um i'm a physical therapist and i work with a lot of um children with special needs like a lot of children with uh, on autistic spectrum and um we do a lot of music and just recently i I, uh, aiden school was offering violin lessons uh because they can't do it in person they're doing it virtually and at first I was like, ooh, I don't know. I said, I said to Osiris, what should we do? So then I looked up the same thing, neuroplasticity in the music, everything that your organization, the mind organization, um, seems like it's, it's missions for. And, yeah, it comes up in all the, liter- in li- all the literature how music helps with um, neurodevelopment. So yeah, so right. so he's yeah. about to start violin yeah, we, class. We, <laughs> so that's incredible. Yeah, yeah we, we you know we we uh we've been excited about uh, you know uh, we were having a conversation with Christy and and Justine Chadley, uh, who um, works alongside a, music, a licensed music therapist, and uh, you know we were talking about how important uh, music and and Justine's role in, in Mickey's recovery was. And, and on the spot, we came up with the main mind, you know, music inspired neurological development and uh, are putting together a program for 2021 that, you know, won't just be accessible, obviously, to Mickey's uh, warrior uh, babies, but, you know, really, we hope for it to be a national program that can uh, have national participation nice. and, and really help, you know, with, with neurologic development in these, in these young minds. Um, it's a beautiful thing, and we're really, really excited for it. Nice, nice. Can't wait. Can't wait for it. Now, uh, how many uh, families have joined um, or are participating in your um, in Mickey's uh, program? I mean, we've helped several hundred families, wow. and uh, we've helped families in in almost twenty states, and I believe now fifteen countries. Uh, and and we're growing. You know, we have a, a pretty active social media reach and following, and uh, we get inquiries roughly every day from families who are looking for answers and uh it's something that we take pride in and we we vertically uh, we we integrate very vertically with a family meaning uh once they come into our program and we understand you know what we need to do to advocate for them you know we're with them every step of the way uh you know if there's a, a barrier with insurance you know we're on top of that if there's uh, 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 too much of a wait time to get into a specific level four epilepsy center. You know, we, we we're very loud about getting our families in very quickly. Um, if there are any barriers, you know, whether it's transportation and or 
uh, being able to get to somewhere with close proximity, you know, we, we help solve those kind of problems. And uh, it's, um, it's an incredible responsibility that we have. And, and Christy managed that beautifully. Obviously, I support her, our staff supports her. And uh, it's a gift, really, to be able to use, you know, Christy's experience and our organizational resources uh, to help parents get some peace of mind and to help children be children. Um, it's a gift for us to be able to do it. And, uh, and we take it very seriously. We're humbled by it. Uh, we're guided, we think divinely in, in our mission. And, uh, and really it's an opportunity of a lifetime uh, to help these families uh, and their children. Let me ask you, how rewarding is it for you to be in this position? Uh, coming from, you know, for-profit, the business industry, um, the music industry, and helping A-listers, to now you helping the everyday person and their family. Like, how has that uh, made you feel and what you've thought about that transition and what you're doing? In my heart, I've always been a public servant. You know, I uh, I was in the legislature at a young age. Um, I was a, a county commissioner at a young age, and and you know, this is a, a story for another time. But I I made some decisions that got myself in trouble, uh, legally and criminally, for that matter. Uh, and I was able, I was not able to serve uh, in public life anymore. Uh, you know, I actually served federal prison time. Uh, for my role in a in a political bribe scandal here in Las Vegas, and uh, and my ability to serve the public uh, as elected as an elected leader uh, was rightly taken away from me. Um, and I was in the private sector for some time. Uh, I had done some consulting uh, with nonprofits, but to be able to serve families in this way is incredibly rewarding. Mm. Uh, and to see you know a mom. Uh, breathe a little bit easier because yeah. of the work Chrissy does wow. uh, to advocate on behalf of her and her family and her child uh, is incredibly rewarding. Knowing that, you know, when we raise money, we're raising money to save children's lives and to preserve the quality of life and to let them experience a childhood like every child should. I mean, it's incredibly humbling. It's touching. It's inspiring. Uh, it's motivating. And, uh, and gives me an opportunity to use, you know, my God-given talent uh, to support families and caring for their children. And uh, it's an awesome responsibility, one we take seriously, and one that I'm incredibly grateful to be able to serve in. Wonderful. Now, um, Dario, how would um, a family know that they're, they're, if, if their hospital is a level four? Like, how would they know? I mean, they're, they're designated. Uh, okay. Like, you know, those that are level fours, you know, it's pretty apparent. You know, okay. we're developing a resource uh, to list every level four epilepsy center uh, in the country that we should launch basically on our website yes. uh, in the next month or two. Um, but but you can it, it's very that information is rarely available. But, uh, you know, I can't impress upon enough the importance of families, you know, getting to a level four epilepsy yeah. center uh, if they're not getting the answers they need uh, from the pediatrician or from the local neurologist and really seeing a pediatric epileptologist that can uh, help them understand what's going on with their child and, and get them on the right path for treatment so that, uh, you know, the child, uh, their quality of life can be, the quality of life can be preserved. Got it. Yeah. Cause for us, we live in New York city, so we have a lot mm-hmm. of major hospitals. So we, happen to land in a level four, but I don't think right. that's always the case for, you know, every child. And I don't think they, they would know to ask or know what to look for. So, but that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing to, to know to, what to look for, you know, cause not everyone knows. Right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, like in Nevada, you, you know, we have a population of roughly you know 3 million people now and we don't have a level, a level four epilepsy center. Right. We, we have one in Salt Lake City, and we have one in Orange County. Those are two that are nearest proximity to us, right? And uh, and you think a, a state with the resources of Nevada, and yeah. you know, we have 50 million visitors coming from outside <laughs> of Nevada. And, you know, for us not to have a level four epilepsy center speaks to the lack of access um, that exists across many states. Uh, so, you know, like I said earlier, we're we're really going to push for Mickey's Law which will include a push for level four epilepsy center uh, study and, and feasibility for Nevada. And, and hopefully 
uh, that will serve as a national model to start having a conversation about where resources are available state by state and what we can do to make sure that every child, uh, regardless of what state they live in, has access immediately to a level four epilepsy center. Nice. Now, have you guys partnered up with any hospitals to uh, push the awareness, uh, have them sponsor or promote what you're doing to connect with other hospitals to create a network? Yeah, we, we uh, basically have worked with a number of level four epilepsy centers across the country. And uh, we've been very fortunate to develop strong relationships and to uh, be able to advocate for our families you know, within those uh, centers. Uh, we've partnered with Chalk, for example. We um, last year had a gala and uh, one of the beneficiaries of the donated proceeds uh, was uh, Chalk Children's. A hospital of Orange County. And in fact, uh, Mickey's name is on their lobby of their neurological neurological center. Wow. Um, so, you know, we, we're always looking to grow our network. We're always looking to uh, partner with level four epilepsy centers. And, and as we get more families reaching out to us, and as we in turn advocate for more families, uh, the need to create those partnerships with uh, pediatric epileptologists, and level four epilepsy centers continues to grow. And it's something that's very high on our priority list to continue growing our network of level four epilepsy centers that we have access to uh, so that we can advocate for families um, across you know every state and, and hopefully one day every country uh, for that matter. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, what, the, what you guys are doing is amazing because you're building something that wasn't there. Yes. And now is bringing so much awareness, and you've given people a place to go. I, I think for us, when our son was first started developing the seizures, we really didn't recognize them because we knew nothing about seizures. Yes. So there was always those subtle signs that happened, and even through the whole process, we're still clueless to what's going on because everything's happening right. so quickly, and um, we didn't even know who to turn to. We didn't know who to talk to. Uh, it's like we were out on our own and now knowing what we know now is like, you're not alone. And with you guys and what you're doing uh, with Mickey's miracle is awesome because there are a lot of children out there are suffering. There's a lot of families because it affects them as well that are suffering. And you guys are giving them a ray of hope, you know, that, Hey, you know, you're not alone. Um, we got your back, you know, do reach out. Um, because a lot of them don't know who to turn to. And don't even know what they're looking for, you know. So it's like a lot of fear and anxiety that's going around. Yeah, no, we, 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 we I mean, that's very well said, and it's, it's what we do. And uh, to see, you know, I handle a lot of the uh, uh, strategic planning and a lot of the uh, fundraising and advancing the legislative efforts and creating partnerships. And and Christy obviously uh, is very hands-on involved in all of those endeavors. Uh, but she's at her best when she's working with families. Uh, I mean, she dives in, she works to understand the history of the child and, uh, and really has this uh, passion for uh, advocating for these families in a way that I haven't seen anyone advocate for anything really ever in my life. And, and it's because she, you know, understands that, you know, Mickey was able to, get the help she needed. And I, I think part of what drives her is to ensure that every child gets that same opportunity. You know, every year we take a picture of uh, Mickey with a seizure free sign this year, it was, you know, eight years seizure free. And uh, I know Christy uh, pours out her soul and prays that every parent with a child suffering from pediatric epilepsy can hold up a sign that says seizure free one day. And, uh, and, and it's really incredible to see. It's inspiring to me. And, uh, you know, we, we're not a big organization in terms of manpower, uh, but we work beautifully together and uh, we all play our part. Uh, and uh, it just works because we, we care about what we do. And we know what we do is making a difference in the lives of children and their families. And uh, we're tireless in, in our, our commitment to, uh, again, uh, having this vision for a world that, uh, has every child be seizure free and epilepsy free? Yeah, it's amazing. I, I got to say thank you for what you guys are doing because there's so many families that you're helping you probably didn't even know or even were aware of, and it's it's good to know that you know 
there are people out there who got, you know, who have our backs, uh, especially going through something like this. I just want to say thank you. And if uh, families wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do so? You know, uh, the best way to get in touch with us is on our social media, really, uh, on Instagram. It's at Mickey's Miracles, M I C K I E S Miracles. Our website is Mickey's Miracles. Dot org. Uh, our contact information is listed on there, and uh, and we welcome anyone who has questions, who uh, needs you know support, uh, who has had trouble getting to a level four epilepsy center, uh, or really struggling with any issue related to pediatric epilepsy. We're here for you. Uh, we invite you to become part of our family. We invite you to follow us on social media. We invite you to visit our website, and we also extend this offer to you. Uh, we will support you. We will offer our expertise, our experience, our passion, and our heart and hold your hand through every part of the process to ensure uh, that you experience a result like Nikki has ex- experienced. Now, obviously, we're not medical professionals and, at the, uh, at, you know, we're, we're at the mercy of uh, medical professionals and uh, every child is different, but we are committed to working with families in a way that uh, they feel supported, yes. they feel guided, uh, they get the access they need, and they have every opportunity for their child to be seizure-free. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I have to say, Dario, personally, thank you for the transition you made to this side and using your talents mm-hmm. and your experience to bring awareness uh, to the forefront because uh, I think no one else would have been able to do it the way you can. Uh, because of your background, your ability to, you know, move about and get the, get the word out, basically. So thank you. Well, and- I, no, I appreciate that. I, I feel grateful, honestly. And, uh, you know, with my background, uh, obviously, there's a lot of benefits to my background. But, you know, with my history, you know, there's there's some risks, too. And, and you know, I talked to Christy and Gabe about that, and, and they gave me an opportunity uh, to lead the organization, even knowing that, you know, when I was 25 or 26, I had those legal issues and, uh, you know, they looked past that. They gave me a second chance. They entrusted me with the leadership of the organization and working alongside them. And it's been a gift. And, uh, like I said, I consider them family. I consider Mickey, you know, family. And, uh, it's been a beautiful blessing for me. Uh, and, uh, it quite frankly quenches a thirst for public service, uh, that I was missing, that I was missing. Um, so, uh, all, Really, uh, all the accolades and all the credit goes to Christian Gabe for being so forward thinking and uh, for being so loving and, and forgiving and for giving me a chance. And uh, we've been able to do some great work together. We have a lot more to do. Yeah, uh, we have we have you know legislation legislation to pass in Nevada. We have national legislation to, to pass. Uh, we have this music program that we will uh, make into a national model. And uh, our next thing we're going to tackle is is mental health because we know how taxing this can be on families oh, yes. Yes. and their mental health <laughs> and, and their emotional security and, and uh, their emotional ability. And, uh, you know, after we tackle mind and we launch that, you know, our next major program is, is going to be you know, supporting families uh, through mental health offering. Uh, and that's something that's not talked about a lot, something that is kind of stigmatized, mm-hmm. but it's very real it is. and, and can, and can oftentimes, tear a family apart and it's it's bad enough that you have a child uh with something that uh you can't solve yourself um uh to add the emotional angst of it and the emotional anxiety and and uh and and the toll that takes on a family you know that that's that's even more difficult and even add a level of complication um that we need to have a conversation about and we need to start providing solutions for and uh that's one of the things that we're going to tackle in 2021 as well yeah, awesome. that's that's gonna be great because yeah, and that's what we also talk about in our podcast. It's the relationships. You know, how does grandma feel about this? It, the, having epilepsy takes having a child epilepsy takes a toll on the whole family. It's not right. just it's not just the mom and dad, but yeah, specifically the mom and dad. But it, you know, it's hard for everyone. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys are going into that family support and the mental health. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dario. I really uh, appreciate your time and, uh, you know, spending with us and really sharing the mission and what you guys are doing with uh, Mickey's Miracle. Um, Sounds like you guys are 
on track to really expand this and um, reach a lot of people and, su- and help a lot of people, There's families out there no, who are in need. Osiris and Danina, uh, you know, we appreciate the invitation uh, and the uh, opportunity to talk about what we're doing and, and how we help families. And I really want to take a moment to you know recognize you guys too because uh, you guys are having these conversations, right? And uh, you have your experience with Aiden, and you know you've had. Uh, You've learned the hard way that uh, this is not easy, right? Uh, but you've uh, you know stayed with it, and you've given him the support, and you've opened up avenues uh, for treatment, like with CBD, that is an important part of this conversation. Uh, you know, beyond what uh, traditional medicine can provide, and uh, it, it's incredible to see the leadership you're providing, the conversations you guys are having, and the minds you're opening uh, by what you do. So. Uh, we're grateful for you and uh, the opportunity to be on here uh, is really a gift for us. So we thank you. Oh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope to uh, have you guys back on. We definitely going to be following you guys on social media. And um, if the time or the day allows us and when we, get, you know, get some sense of something, we'll almost travel out west and uh, visit you guys and see what you guys yeah, are doing. Yeah, we'd love to see you. We'd love to have you here and uh, show you our office and, and talk to some of the families that yeah. we've been blessed to have as part of our uh, Mickey's Warriors. And and uh, really, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful organization. It's very uh, family centered. And, uh, you know, we would invite you to, to you know, come along with us anytime. Right. Anytime. Oh. Definitely. We'll take that invite. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a beautiful night. Thank you again for the invitation. And, uh, you know, keep up the great work, keep up, you know, driving the conversations. Uh, these conversations matter. It drives awareness. Uh, it drives uh, information. Yes. And uh, it really inspires, I think, uh, a new kind of conversation around something that is curable, something that is treatable. Yeah. Yes. And I think as more people understand that and, and can really kind of wrap their head around the fact that, you know, epilepsy awareness is lacking epilepsy funding is lacking yeah but it doesn't have to and uh as more people become aware of that i think uh the movement grows yes. and uh we create more hope for parents who have children uh suffering from epilepsy and again uh provide a quality of life for children and uh, preserving their childhood in a way that uh you know uh, every child deserves yeah i totally Absolutely. agree it's all about the children Thank you again, Dario. We really appreciate it. And continue with your strong leadership and guiding Mickey's Miracles organization um, into the future. I mean, even long after, you know, it is still to be standing and uh, people will continue to support it. You got it, Osiris. Thank you. And uh, thank you again, Nina. All right. Great. Thank have you. a good night. Have a good one. All right. Have a blessed night. Thank you. You too. Thank you.